Welcome, everyone. I'm David B. Savage. I've been talking about the new paradigm for, well, since early March. In this pandemic, this is an opportunity. As Winston Churchill once said, never let a good crisis go to waste. This is our opportunity for change, our opportunity to collaborate. Yes, with COVID-19, in many ways, it's been horrific. It's been horrible. In some ways, it's bringing us together like never before. The world has a common enemy. And in some ways, and in recent days, we've seen where chaos is coming. This is our opportunity. We are under threat. There are chances and opportunities for us to grow together, to create a better future. These are the types of scenes we see more often. Now, this scene is in Florence, Italy, about four years ago, but we see this more often, and now we see masks. This is me a few weeks ago with my COVID-19 Tiger King look, driving down the street, wondering who's out there, who's out there, who's out there, what's the risk? How do I protect myself? It's a strange place to be. And then we all have our COVID haircuts and we gain our COVID 20 pounds. But so many of us have been working to give, to serve, whether it's giving blood, giving service, helping with the food bank, reaching out to the lonely, uh, providing our services. There has been a cavalcade, a contagion of love. A contagion of love. And yet, are we alive? Are we alive? What are we being called to now? In recent days, unfortunately, there has been violence. Violence in protest. Violence because of the inequalities, the hostility, the murders. And you get people being pitted against each other as opposed to solving the problems. What's the root cause of racism, violence, hatred? Why don't we go there as opposed to burning down grocery stores? Madeleine Albright published this book, Fascism, uh, late 2019. I've just read it in May. And it is a warning, and there are signs, growing signs, not only from last century, but in June 2020. Fascism not only endured through the 20th century, but now presents a more virulent threat to peace and justice than at any time since the end of World War II. The momentum towards democracy that swept the world when the Berlin Wall fell has gone into reverse. These are the things that scare me. Some of the things that cheer me is the return of wildlife, the return of dolphins in Venice, apparently, the return of so many elk in the Kootenai Rockies that I love. You know, goats and whales all over the world. In Nepal, they can see Everest, from the first, for the first time in 40 years, apparently. As we're on lockdown, the animals and the planet is healing. This is an opportunity. And the real fear is, um, are we headed to another Great Depression? Are we headed to another Great Depression? Is this the shock that our planet and our economy deserves? Our government's giving out too much money, creating a disincentive to engage in work. Are they creating a, a huge, huge debt load? 
that can only be solved by a mass bankruptcies from the pandemic, mass inflation, mass challenges way beyond 2020, way beyond. Nobody really knows. We want to protect the health and welfare of the people of the planet first. The environment seems to be healing, and yet our economy, our future, our opportunity to feed ourselves is in question. And as we are at this point in our history, we are entering a new launch area. <coughs> so what is the orderly manner? You know, what is the orderly manner as we re-enter the world post COVID world, getting back to normal. I think that's a mistake. Let's not get back to the way it was. And let's not think that there's some hero, some president, some prime minister, some superhero, spiritual, religious leader, whatever, that's going to save us. You know, I put this on for my grandkids a number of years ago. It was a lot of fun, but together we must heal, we must create this new way of being together. There is no one. The one is us. What if we choose not to return? There is no going back. Can you feel that in your heart? Part of the fear is, you know this, there is no going back. So how do we create the new? What if we created a new paradigm where the environment, the social and the economic were refreshed, innovated, recreated, generated in a much more holistic way? Think about this for a while. Think about what this might look like. True leadership that generates value and wealth by serving the community and protecting our planet. We can do this. Perhaps we actually have no choice but to do this, to get out of the chaos and the fear, the disparity. I love this quote. As I've been reaching out to my network around the world, this is one of my favorite quotes. Just read that. Just think about what that looks like. What is that like for you? So this, for Joe, who was a leader in his indigenous community in the Kootenai Rockies, this concept of a new paradigm is not new, but the need has been constant and elevated for Joe. Our hearts are there. An amazing thinker, that I've been influenced for the last 15 years is Margaret Wheatley. Change always involves a dark night when everything falls apart. Well, we're there. Yet if this period of dissolution is used to create new meaning, then chaos ends and new order emerges. We can go up that watchtower tower and see beyond the pandemic, see beyond the return to the old ways that are not serving us anymore. While some go low, let's go high. What is your worldview? Are you willing to create a new one? I say yes. So what's my hope? My hope is this new paradigm and the community that I'm building around it that I've been slowly and intentionally building for the last three months and hope that will grow and take off and this will become yours is you will reach out to your world, ask powerful questions, create structures, incentives, communities, collaboratives where we can end oppression, pollution, disparity, degradation, and rigidity. The new world has started in 2020. We have 2020 vision. And underpinning all this, the political structures that just seem to be divisive and old and antiquated, 
and not in our interests. This new paradigm can create a new democracy where your circles, your collaboratives, your communities, your organizations can drive change and the politicians can recognize what you are telling them you want, what you are telling them what you want, as opposed to them telling us what serves them in the guise of serving us. It's a new economic, social, and environmental paradigm that is arising. I hope we can all create this and empower our future. This is a bridge. This is a bridge. By the way, most of these pictures are all mine. Well, other than two. And I love photography, and this is a great symbol of what we need to do because it encompasses a circle in getting over an obstacle. So we can get beyond challenge and conflict and go to innovation and success. And I say it's with collaboration. We can go there. We will go there. I think we must go there. There seems to be grand canyons of separation, fear, isolation, inequality, pandemic across the planet and across our homes. Think of the rainbow. What have we learned? Where are we going? What are you willing to commit to? How will you change your language? So here's some things that I think would be helpful because it's not about me and it's not about the 20 and eight countries that I've been talking to about this so far. It's about you and your network and your ever growing cellular service across your family and across the planet. What's in this for you? Think about that today and then the next days, what's in this new paradigm for you? Why would you do it? Why is this better than do nothing or go back to normal? Einstein was quoted as saying, if he had an hour to solve a problem, he would spend the first 55 minutes thinking of the best questions. So let's not rush into this. Let's take the 55 minutes of this hour to think about three powerful questions that you would like to ask of others in your conversations to build this conversation. And who are three people that you will ask them of? How will you spread this new collaborative conversation? On social media, I invite you to use the hashtag new paradigm. And that way we can follow each other on social media. We can be inclusive and collaborate and learn together. Uh, email your ideas to me at david at davidbsavage.com and I will share them. I will continue to post interviews. And it's my intention to start interviewing many of the leaders like you on these questions, on these topics, so we build that culture of trust and knowing that we're not alone in this. There's many people like you and around the planet that want to create a better future. This is our chance. I hope you join me. I hope you overwhelm me. I know we will. Let's now create our new future. Let's now create something that actually serves the environment, our communities, and our own pocketbooks. David B. Savage, thank you for collaborating. Thank you for dreaming together. And thank you, thank you for taking up this mantle. Bye for now.